Hi guys, it's Magic Steve Younger here again with the Financial Drive Thru and it's good to be back. In today's video, we're going to be looking into how you could set up your own free Bitcoin wallet with blockchain.com. I find it's a very good platform to actually get started with because it's easy, it's straightforward and I mean, you really can't go wrong with that because I mean, every day we're talking about Bitcoin, we're talking about how great it is and all that, but we actually haven't stopped to focus on how to get started properly. And so, yeah, if you're interested in that kind of content, you know what to do? Smash the like button, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned. Let's drive through. All right, guys, without wasting too much time, what we have here is blockchain.com. And uh, basically, this is where we're going to get started. So now, if you already have an account, of course, you can come straight away and log in. But then, I mean, this video is really for the people who want to get started and don't know how. So we're going to click on get a free wallet. Just so you know, it's available on the Apple App Store and you can also get it on Google Play. So definitely mobile compatible, something you could actually work with. So here you have your wallet creation page and it's as straightforward as it gets. You just put in your email address, create a password and confirm the password. Now, the email you can always use to send me messages if you want to is tfdt at protonmail.com. And so I'm just going to put that in there. Oops, I actually have the uh, dual keyboard function. And so, yeah. Now, if you're using Google Chrome, you could actually get Chrome to suggest a password for you and it will bring out something, you know, quite safe, I guess. So once you put that in, obviously it knows you didn't learn the previous one and it's going to confirm it as well. And if you go ahead with creating this, you're definitely going to have that saved in your browser. Now, it's always good to keep a separate note of what your password is, just in case anything should ever go wrong. Um, I find it's really not wise to save passwords and stuff on your browser, just in case you get hacked. But this, again, this is just a tutorial. I don't really care about this account. I'm not going to put any money into this. I'm probably not even going to use this again except for tutorial basis. So that's the only reason I'm going ahead with it. And I'm not really trying to hide anything in this video. So you also have to tick this box that says you've agreed to the terms of service and the privacy policies. Um, sure, most people never read this. If you want to, you could. It's not that big a deal. Uh, go ahead and create a wallet right away and wallet successfully created, it's that simple. So as you can see, uh, the password's been saved to my Google Chrome. I could go manage that password in my account, probably change it, probably do whatever. I mean, it's up to you. Again, I don't recommend people store their passwords on their browsers or on their laptops. I'd always recommend you do something offline just to make sure that you're safe, okay? Something you can keep tabs on. Um, some people use Excel pages and they you know, detail everything out. Depends on how organized you are. I recommend you have a journal. Uh, password journal it's it's old school but it's safe so it's one of those things uh, if people accept someone really really has it in for you and they you know outright rob you you should be fine so right away we're in here and you can see you have to confirm your email address to properly secure your account so um, you have the options to resend the email if you don't find it or you can change your email address you know and then have one sent to you so these are the options you can go through right Again, we're just trying to make this video as simple as possible, so I'm not going to go into any of that. Uh, definitely check your email, you know, and uh, make sure you get everything verified and properly secured. Now, um, we are looking at the general dashboard and over here you can see the actual current price of Bitcoin. Now, um, the most important thing that you're going to do with any Bitcoin wallet is to send and receive funds. OK, if you want to send Bitcoin, naturally, I'm supposed to have something in my balance, right? And you can send a bunch of different currencies right now through the blockchain.com wallet. So they send USD packs, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin, Ether and Stellar right now. So if you happen to want to be able to send other cryptocurrencies, obviously there are more wallets that you can uh, try out. And on that note, we're actually going to be exploring a few others. Uh, so if you want to find out about that, I'll be doing a second video on the Exodus wallet, which is my second favorite wallet. And I'll give you reasons why in that video. So definitely stay tuned for that content. Here you can see I have no money in this wallet, so I'm definitely not going to be able to send. But assuming I wanted to send some money right now and I had some money in this wallet, I'm going to have to send to an address kind of like an account number so let's not overcomplicate things let's simplify and take it like a regular fiat bank transaction so if you want to send money to your friend of yours first of all you need his name you need his account number and I mean any other information that you want to put in 
So in that case, the two section here would be the account number or in crypto terms, an address. And I'll show you what an address looks like in a second when we hit the uh, receive or request option. You're also going to put in the amount you're going to send. So you can put it in a dollar amount or a Bitcoin amount and the conversion will happen either way. There's a minor fee that's paid for every Bitcoin transaction. It kind of helps the whole process along. Now it's nowhere like the fees you would pay if you had to do a banking transaction. So I mean, definitely not that much. And you have the options to actually do a regular send or a priority send. If it's a priority thing, confirmation is gonna be in zero to 60 minutes guaranteed, but obviously you're gonna to have to pay a little extra for priority transactions. But most of the time you're not gonna need that. And I mean, Bitcoin transactions are super fast, which is kind of the whole point. So yeah, always live in a regular except you know, it's an extenuating circumstance, like you absolutely just have to get it across and the network might be backed up or whatever. I just spoke about the address earlier on. Every account has an address, like an account number. Okay, in this case, this happens to be the account number for this account we just created, okay? It's the 1GDX, whatever the grammar is, and it ends with an NU. Now, if you were to send money to a friend, he would have to provide you with his address. And um, to do that, to get your address, simply come to the receive or request Bitcoin section and copy your address. Or you could also scan the barcode. Depending on what device you're using, it's a very nifty thing, the whole barcode system with phones and everything nowadays. But if you don't, just, you know, copy that and say done. And then you, if you're sending it to someone, you could just come here and uh, either paste it or scan the barcode that you have to so in this case we would be pasting and now we have an address that is going to and obviously you want to always verify to make sure you don't make a mistake in the address because if you do miss and I mean simply one single letter is wrong it's going somewhere else okay each address is unique to you it's basically just the same way if you mess up an account number in someone's banking information well either it wouldn't go to the person because i mean nowadays you can search for the name that matches the account number uh, unfortunately you can't do that with crypto you just have to know the address send it to the person because i mean it's all anonymous so we're not linking names or anything just make sure you get the address a good trick is to compare the first three uh, letters or digits and the last three as well you know just to make sure you have everything if you copy and paste you should be fine so put in the amount and say if I wanted to send a hundred you can see it's populating the Bitcoin amount as I speak now it says insufficient funds because again I don't have money in this account so this is just a brief tutorial to tell you how to send money how to receive money how to open up an account and um, Alternatively, you could also buy and sell on the platform. So right now I'm in Canada, so it's immediately identified where I am. And Canada is currently not available for purchase and sale of Bitcoin on this platform. This isn't where I buy my crypto from. I'm going to do a separate video for that. But I mean, fill in the country that you want. I am assuming, uh, let's see, the United States should be able to do this. There we go. So if you're in America, for example, you can make this purchase from here. Um, don't worry about that too much. There are numerous platforms where you could buy and sell. This is really just about creating a wallet. And again, if you have currencies, you can also swap from one to another. That's another feature that they do here. And so this is actually quite nice where in case you have Bitcoin and you don't want to have to go to an exchange to actually buy or sell, you could swap it uh, between approved currencies on the same platform. And what this does is essentially give you full control over your funds while you do it. So you don't have to wait, there are no waiting times, you just basically switch from one currency to another. Now once you set up your wallet, what I want you to do immediately is go to the security center. Remember this is money we're dealing with, okay? Cryptocurrency is money, right? So first things first, what you want to do is make sure your money is safe and that it's fully in your control. So you come to the security center and here you could actually do it a basic or an advanced setup right depending on how computer savvy you are you should do something in the advanced section but even if you don't 
the basics are pretty simple. Verify your email address. You definitely also want to enable two-step verification and that could be through the use of any of the authentication apps. You could use Google Authenticator, which is a smash hit favorite. You could also use, uh, here they say, YubiKeys. I don't recommend SMS codes because, I mean, phones are easily compromised. Um, you could also use Authy, that's A-U-T-H-Y. I'm gonna put links to each of these authentication apps in the details section of the video. Definitely check them out. Do your research, choose the one that you feel is best for you. I strongly recommend Google Authenticator. You can almost never go wrong with that one. I've used both Google Authenticator and Authy. I've never used YubiKey, so I really don't know much about that, but I mean, Yes, you can incorporate SMS codes into it. But again, if you have Google Authenticator, you really don't need to, okay? Now, the whole thing about two-step authentication, if you don't know about it, is it's an extra layer of protection. And sure, it can be annoying, especially when you really just wanna log in real quick and it asks you for the code, so you have to refer to your phone or wherever you install the app to try and get like a secret code. But what it does is it gives you a different code each time you want to log in. And I think it's uh, reset every 30 seconds. So the general idea is each time you or maybe someone else tries to log into your wallet, they have to provide that code to show that they truly are you. Also, very important, whenever you're dealing with a crypto wallet, and I stress crypto wallet, this is not just about Bitcoin at this point. If you open up a wallet, there's going to be a backup phrase. It's made of 12 words, and it's usually called a backup phrase, a keyword phrase, depending regardless of what it is. You have to note those words somewhere. Now again, preferably, I would say do this offline in a booklet somewhere that you are sure nobody is ever going to get access to because in the event that you lose your login details and you're unable to recover your account, this phrase is what you're going to need to be able to get that account back. If you have your 12 keyword phrase, chances are you can always recover your money. The big mistake a lot of people made back in the day was opening wallets and not storing their 12 keyword phrases. So uh, generally, if, when they lose that or you change your laptop, you format it, you do something, you're unable to get back in and you lose like a lot of money. Now, I mean, there's only so much Bitcoin in circulation and there's so much Bitcoin has been lost because people are unable to access their wallets again. So, so let's try not to be one of those people, shall we? They actually also put out a tip here. They say, don't store your backup phrase on your computer or anywhere online. And these days it's so easy for hackers to get access to your computer. So, I mean, by all means, don't make yourself a target one and do not store critical information online. So here what you have is a printout that is recommended for you to be able to store your um, 12 backup phrases, right? So here they say if you ever need to recover your wallet for any reason, type the following URL into your browser and that is login.blockchain.com slash recover. And so once you have that printout, you come over and you click on backup funds and immediately you start to see the different words, right? So here they show you the very first four. In this case, it's swear, prosper, truly, and sniff. So random, doesn't make any sense, doesn't have to make any sense. What you need to do now is go back to the printout that you have and write that the first one, two, three, four, write those words down in the order that you receive them. So swear is number one, prosper is number two, Truly is number three and Sniff is number four. And the same goes on. You do the next four words and the next four words and the next four words. And when you finish, they're going to give you a little quiz here to ask you if you like to try and make sure that you did the assignment that they gave you. So you have to put in the second word, the fifth word, the 11th word and the seventh word. Now, in this video, I just skipped through all of them. I didn't memorize them, so I actually can't finish this. And so I have to click on review the phrases again and go over the whole assignment, this time writing it down just to be able to back up and keep my funds safe. So I want you to go through this whole process and that should pretty much secure your account. And each time you do something, you know, you're going to be able to see the extent of the verification that you've done. So they'll be able to tell you how secure your account is as you progress along these steps. If you were to check out the advanced phase, you could change your password. You could put a second password, which is a bit risky because I find some people really get confused the more passwords that they have. But again, remember, if you can keep everything as safe as it should be, then you should be just fine. Uh, once you enable the two-step verification, I, I would usually say you should disable this feature because what it is, is it if you've been logging into it frequently, you might be tired of always checking your authentication app. And so you want it to remember that you put in 
a um, code already in a short period of time so you'll be able to log in without having to do it repeatedly it makes sense if you know you're a very private person you're not exposing yourself to anything but it's just a risk just in case you're in a public environment and someone else can quickly access your wallet and send your funds out now under the advanced section you can also whitelist your ip address and uh, what this does is allows login without email authentication from the following list of ip addresses so you would have put down a list of ip addresses and uh, you know just specify that anything coming from these ips is fine by you so definitely let me know what you think about this if it helped you out if uh, there's anything you want me to add i'll be sure to answer them in the comments as well and like i mentioned earlier i'm going to be doing a few more similar videos about how to set up different types of wallets and if that's something that you're interested in definitely stay tuned hit the subscribe button so you can catch my videos when they drop and i just want to say thank you for sitting through this with me it's been my pleasure and i hope to see you again on the next one. Once again, my name is Majesty Bianga, and this has been another edition of the Financial Drive-Thru. Thank you.